Okay, over here we are probably about three, four hundred feet further west of that last Pennsylvania outcrop I just showed you. And we're stopping here to look at something pretty unique within the Pennsylvania here in Illinois. What you see here are these rounded boulders. These were not rounded by erosion, they're in place. This is a black limestone. And in between the black limestone is black shale and black coal. Now, the fact that this stuff is in between here tells us that these formed in place. And how they probably formed was that this was a restricted area in the Pennsylvania seas, meaning not a lot of water circulation. So um, microorganisms could accumulate and do their own thing here. And what they did was they left these round black limestone nodules. We're going to see one more of these at the mouth of the uh, of Black Rock Run. Okay, we are at an outcrop in the creek bed about 150 feet west of where we just were at that hard limestone nodule. And what you see here that I'm sitting on is probably the second hardest unit in the Pennsylvania. This is coal, the coal Chester number two coal. This is the thickest coal in the area. It's two to three feet thick here. And it, it goes east into the cut bank a little bit and then disappears. Now, our anaclinorium, we're on the anaclinorium here. The Pennsylvanian dips west like the Ordovician rocks do, just not as steeply. Uh, so, but what you see here in the rock is you see two sets of fractures. You see one going this way and one going this way. The set of fractures going this way are pretty much parallel to our anticline. The ones going this way are perpendicular. And what that does is that forces the rock to break, since it's somewhat resistant, in blocks, squares and rectangles and, and cubes. Okay, from this point, we're going to head west more, and we're going to see something interesting. We're going to encounter another fault. Uh, we're not going to go down in elevation all that much, maybe five, six feet. And we're going to see this unit, but it's going to be above our heads, at least 10 to 12 feet. Okay, now right here, the creek goes from due west to due north about 50 feet or so. And then it goes back due west. Now what I wanted to show you here is this outcrop, this obviously dipping outcrop behind me right here. Now we're about three, 300 to 500 feet from where I just had you. But the interesting thing about this here is this limestone. Overall, it's, it dips this way, which is kind of southwest. And this is what we call a marker bed. It's the only place in the park where this is exposed. Now, as a marker bed, it serves as a useful tool to figure out structure in an area. And we see that this dips southwest very quickly. If memory serves me correctly, it's 25 degrees or so to the southwest. Where at the last stop I had you, the Colchester coal was pretty flat. Now, that coupled with the fact that this creek changes direction before going back to its original course tells us that something's going on here that there's quite possibly a fault right through here that cuts up through the Pennsylvania. And we have further evidence of that if we pan to the north. Up here, in this old quarry face, what you see near the top here is the Colchester number two coal. And you can tell by looking at it that it dips to the west. And it's bent in the middle, dips to the west. But as we come this way, it's gone. You don't see it. It's disappeared. Now, it hasn't just disappeared. What has happened is it's actually under our feet now. So in the exposure behind me, you see the cold chest is a lot higher. Now, we know we've only gone down in elevation six to seven feet or so. And where we saw the cold chest last, it was in the creek bed. Behind us, that's at least 10 to 12 feet higher. So that with the dipping limestone beds and the fact that we don't see the Colchester that way until it's in the bed of the creek tells us that there is a high probability of a fault here. This is that uh, bed of Colchester coal that I just showed you in the quarry face. And as we go west, we see it dips very steeply. And now, 
we are going to go to the mouth of the creek where it meets the Vermilion River. And here we have another one of those black limestone nodules here. This one's pretty big, good size. Now this is a state park, so I'm not going to chip off any rocks, but I want to show you the black limestone. Now we look at this black limestone here, and we can see that it's very fine-grained. You don't see any massive structures, nothing like that. It's just massive, dark, fine-grained, and black. And limestones usually aren't black like this, but here in the Pennsylvania, in this area, we see a lot of them. Okay, before I wrap it up, I just want to make a quick point. If you look behind me, you see these dipping beds to the west. We are on the flank of the anticline here. Uh, where it meets the Vermilion River. So that is all Pennsylvania behind me and from this point on it dips a lot more steeply to the west.